Welcome everybody to this quarterfinal matchup between the USA and Canada in the men's division. We've recovered from a power failure just in time to show you the first pull. My name's Cole Fink and joining me in the commentary box is Steph Ma. Welcome Steph. Good afternoon. We have got an absolute cracker of a game. Two powerhouses on the ultimate scene. Men's Canada versus Men's USA. It's going to be a tight one. These teams are both uh, started off firing and they've won quite a few games over the competition so far. Absolutely, the USA in fact undefeated as we see the first turnover. Canada unable to secure that disc. The USA really untroubled so far. No team has scored more than seven points against them. They've racked up seven wins. And Canada after dropping to a fairly disappointing 15-4 loss to Australia in the first game of the tournament have since played very well. Nobody has scored over nine, so they're on six wins, one loss, and they've immediately got the disc back here. So that's going to be a relief for their O-line as they look to punch in the first O point of the day. Right, so we've got Nap with the disc here, and he's sent it to Armstrong. Armstrong's just done a nice little backhand back here, back to Nap, looking off his options. Big flick across the field. Let's see if they can put it in. We've got Kefa with a big overhand one, and it doesn't come off, unfortunately. It's still pretty windy here. Yeah, that was an ambitious look in this wind, and if ever there's a division you're likely to see some enthusiastic throwing, I reckon under 24 men's is it. They like to bomb some big throws, and that one didn't take into account the, the windy conditions. The wind is running left to right on your screen. And the Americans now with the disc, but they're going to have to move it upwind. Let's see what they can manage. So Sawyer Thompson with the disc. He's the spirit captain. Good grab. A little bit of confusion there. I think we thought there was a call, but we're underway. Elliot Chartok looking to move this disc heavily upwind and we've uncorked the long shot and that was a miscommunication. Taylor was actually turning to cut under just as Carl Morgenstern was cocking the cannon and sending that one upwind and Canadians have got it back, Steph. He really, he really put a lot of juice into that one. Big throw, upwind into the wind. I reckon that'll be a useful throw later on in the game. Just didn't quite work out that time. So we've got number 13, Hugh Knapp, the captain, picking up the disc. He's walking up to the front of the end zone line. A big flick release. It's sitting in the air. Unfortunately stifled in the other end zone by the USA player. Yeah, that was a pretty typical downwind huck for yards, I think. They bomb that one big and high, and Eric Taylor, the big American cutter defender, was able to bat that down. And now Elliot Chartok has elected to take a timeout. It's a pretty early uh, part in the game. We're only three minutes 30 in. Pretty early time to call a timeout, but remember both teams have two timeouts uh, in each half. And I think the Americans would love to start the game with an upwind break. Certainly a lot of the action that we've seen here so far this week have been very upwind, downwind, and I think this game's going to be no exception. So perhaps the Americans now plotting and scheming to see what they can do to bring it back upwind. Absolutely. That's classic for uh, this part of the world in beautiful Perth. It's pretty windy because we're, we're very close to the coast here. We're only a couple of kilometres away from the coast. So the afternoon breeze really comes in and uh, hits us hard here. So it's been interesting to see the way that the players play in the wind. Some of them not very used to playing in conditions like this, but makes for interesting games. It certainly does. And it rewards those who put in the hours training and developed Lots of wrist snap, able to impart a lot of spin on the disc when they release it. Spin gives the disc stability in flight and in these windy conditions, you need every bit of stability you can get. So the Americans have elected to set up with a pretty standard vert stack, two handlers out. And let's see what Chartok can do. Perhaps they've got a bit of a set play to get them going. Oh, 
And we've got a big backhand, upwind Huck. And just a very minor misread. That was a good bid by Jacob Fairfax. He got up high, but unable to bring it down. And the Canadians again, back in possession of the disc. We've got Hugh Knapp, another one of the captains, uh, picking up the disc. He's looking long and looks it off. He's coming under. Another big shot up in the air. There's one Canadian Canada player in the end zone. Didn't quite get a hold of it. Tough going one on two in that catch. And there we see the wind getting the better of the American throw. Chartok, a very experienced player, but the wind here is pretty powerful and quite unpredictable. Got on top of that disc and just sent it down into the grass. So Got a nap behind the disc and he's done a break throw. Nice one there, found Nathan Hurst. That was a very elegant bid from Hurst. Look good. Unfortunately, the throw, not quite so useful. So this is turning out to be a bit of a marathon of a point. We're over six minutes into this game now and nobody's registered a score. A lot of these players have uh, been on the world scene for quite a while, so a long point for them. Not much, not much in it. They've been, they've been used to this sort of thing before. Big launch from Eric Taylor. Somewhat gratuitous bid there from uh, Tim McAllister, the captain. But you've got to show your teammates you're willing to go as hard as you possibly can. So McAllister trying to put some grass stains on his lovely white jersey to start this match off. We're over to Darren Wu on the far sideline. Does a nice little flick into the middle here, and he's found Burley. Oh, that lefty backhand was close to Deed. It was nice. Let's see if... Oh, didn't quite get there. Ty Barbieri tried for that one, even did a layout. Couldn't quite get there, though. This wind is really playing tricks with both teams. Yeah, and those trailing edge catches are difficult there. I think uh, that disc was rotating away from the center of his palm which makes catches even harder. So a good effort, but Barbieri unable to bring it in. Another speculative upwind huck from the Americans. I'm somewhat surprised to see the Canadians forcing backhand. Typically it's easier to move backhands upwind than flicks, but that's their strategy for now. So Armstrong's done a nice little pop over the top. He's found Burley, Burrell, I think. Oh, that was almost a goal. That had a bit of a sniff at it. That was Nathan Hurst there, the captain. Couldn't quite get to it. He put in a lot of work for it, though. So the Canadians not looking as confident on offense as they would like, I don't think, given that they have the wind at their backs. And if they keep this up, it's really a matter of time before their North American friends start to pile on the pressure on the scoreboard as well as the field. That's a nice crossfield look. McAllister's got it and he's uncorked that backhand. But yet again, all for naught as he misses Carl Morgenstern by a reasonable distance. It seems like this point's just gone turn, 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 turn. No one can seem to make that last connection for the score. No, the Canadians have had a number of looks in the end zone. I haven't been counting the turnovers, but they'd have to be five or six each way so far, you'd think. Yeah. We've got Hugh Knapp here, captain behind the disc. Bit of love for him on the live stream. That's a here. better look. Nice one. Brought down by Darren Wu. Canada's on the board. It's 1-0 to Canada. Yeah, that, that throw was a lot better. With the wind behind them, the wind is looking to carry throws long. And some of those earlier Canadian looks had been hard and flat. And that makes for very difficult catches and very easy overthrows. Uh, that throw instead from Knapp, I believe it was, had much more touch on it. Beg your pardon? No, it's Nathan Hurst that sent that disc up. And he's angled the disc back in in the wind. And that's given Wu a nice, easy grab. That was a stunner. It looked, it looked easy. I'm glad that they finally got those connections. Let's see if they can have a little bit more of that sort of movement and uh, stability on the disc into this game. 
So this is going to be our first look at the American O-line. And these guys have had no trouble throughout the tournament racking up winning scores. But this is an opportunity for the Canadians to bring a new defensive look, possibly a new defensive intensity. So we'll see if they're able to trouble the Americans as the Americans troubled them. Ben Sadok. Mecklen now surveying the field in front of him. And a bit of contact in the stack there. I didn't see what happened, but it looks like Mal Bryson a little bit sore after that. What's it called? Pick. Pick. Thank you. Pick is called. Yeah. And I think Bryson's suggesting that it's affected the play, and he's suggesting that the dick oh, perhaps should go back. I just want to make sure it was... I, I was... Oh, yeah. Was it? I, I mean, I didn't think it was within. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't feel... But I, I think I'm going to start. So there's a pick called. The disc is going back there. Is that right? You know where we are? Two guys before you do Two. It's coming in on two. Let's get it going. Good resolution there. So, Mechler with the disc. And he pushes it off to Sadok. Freeze now, and the Americans pretty untroubled, and they're in. That's a nice grab from Joe White in the end zone, and that was a much cleaner O point, Steph, than the Canadians were able to manufacture. Yeah, absolutely. First point was 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. The Americans seem to keep possession of that one really, really well, and uh, they've come back with a rebuttal to that first goal by Canada, and USA has got the second goal of the match. So Canada has been an ultimate fortress for a long time now. They've been one of the powerhouses of this sport really since the inception. And of course, the only problem they have compared to their neighbor to the south is that they have a population, what is it, about one-tenth? Oh, I think. <laughs> it's not much. <laughs> I think uh, about 25, 30 million people in Canada and 340 million or something in America. So the Americans obviously with a much larger pool of players to draw from and that's going to be an advantage. That said, the Canadians have been elite for a long time and they compete head to head with the Americans in the American national scene. So they've seen all these players before. I'm sure everybody on the field knows each other pretty well already. If not, if not from playing against each other, from watching videos and you know staying updated on uh, uh, national uh, games, just with the scores. Nice one. So we've got Hugh Knapp with the disc again, and he's just done a nice little reset back to Connor Armstrong. We've got Keffa with the disc here, and there's been a call made on the field. Just to pick, I think. Although it hasn't affected Jacob Fairfax indicating that he wouldn't have got to the disc. He just wanted the opportunity to catch up. So Captain Hurst is going to keep the disc. Looking for the flick there. He's put it to Wu. Nice little one. Over there to Hurst again. A little bit of back and forth between those two. That's a lovely cut. Wow. Explosive pace. Nice one, he found Cole Keffer for that goal. That was beautiful, textbook. I'll tell you what, Keffer, not a tall man, but he's got a seriously powerful set of legs on him. And he didn't do need to do much to get clear on the open side there, other than put on the afterburners. Look at that. Unbelievable acceleration. And that's one of the exciting things about Ultimate. You don't have to be the tallest player on the field to have an impact. Keffer with a serious set of pistons underneath him. And he's used them to advantage there. That was a blazing cut to the open side. Yeah, he absolutely got there, working really hard. Both teams really, really working hard. They're, they're pretty fresh. They're pretty fresh today. I don't think either of these uh, men's teams have played yet today. Is that right, Cole? I think you might be right, Steph. Yeah, the men's uh, division, there was only been, there's only been the 
one match at uh, 5 o'clock p.m. this afternoon, this one here. Um, there's a couple of other games going on at the moment. We'll do our best to stay with the score updates in uh, Australia versus Great Britain as well. So here comes the American O-line again. Jack Williams here with the disc. Centers it to Parker Bray. Joe White, the goal scorer, back out there in his flashy orange boots, and we've got a pick call a couple of seconds ago. So the wind still pretty strongly running left to right on your screen. The wind's at about 30 kilometres per hour. We had a little weather update in the previous game and it's just stayed it's just stayed at that same uh, speed. Oh, and Alex Olsen has just uncorked a pie. And oh, oh! Nope, he hasn't brought it down. Wow, multiple opportunities there for the Americans to bring that down. That throw was into heavy coverage. What a good effort. Few people looking to get that grab, get that D right in the end zone. Yeah, Joe White with a nice diving attempt trying to pick up the scraps, but he wasn't able to bring it down. It fell just out of reach. We've got William Vu behind the disc at the moment on an easy, nice flick. It's found Felix Marceau. Oh, Back to Vu. It was a bit, it was a bit spicy though. Nice flick hark. Nice one. Michael McKenzie able to hang on to that one, even though the USA uh, defense was right there. That was Tan going to Vu just then. Back to Bryson. And back to Vu. One of their main handlers, William Vu. Oh! Punched it in. Malcolm Bryson, one of the other captains. There's a few on. Team Canada and he's done it. Bryson actually fell over making his upline cut there and I think uh, he felt like his cut was over and then Vu kind of gave him a little pump fake saying I think we could fit one through here and all of a sudden they managed to pump it around the defender for an upwind score. That's incredible. So, just been informed the Canadians had to play a pre-quarter this morning, Steph. Right. So, so they will have uh, already done some running today. USA boys, I think a nice re relaxed one for them this morning. Don't think they'll be feeling so relaxed now. They've just gone down a break. No. And there's these games are going to be tight. There's not much in it. And every single point matters. Absolutely. So, the Canadians are 3-1 now. They started the game on O, and they would be hoping that the Fremantle Doctor, that is the wind that comes blur blaring in from the Indian Ocean, picks up now. They'd love all the assistance they can get to consolidate this break. The Americans probably the favourites heading into this matchup, and the Canadians now in a strong position. That was Vu with that pull. So, Sadok. He is going to get a lot of t disc touches in this game, you'd think. The Americans seemingly untroubled by the wind so far. They're moving this smoothly. That's a nice look through the middle. Wyatt Meckler. Across to Laurie. Almost there. Right on the goal line, and it's a score. Well done, USA. Jack Williams hauls it in. So the Canadians, if they're going to consolidate behind their break, they're going to have to score upwind. Though the wind does seem to have dropped just for a moment, doesn't it, Steph? Yeah, it has. Funny Perth weather. You never know. We're consistent with the sunshine. Yes. That's been nice. It has been a bit of a cooler one today. It's been about 35 in... Um, 35 degrees Celsius in recent days, but today it only got up to 26, so a much cooler one. These are uh, teams coming from colder climates, of course, they're coming from winter, 
over to the Australian summer and I'm sure they're very glad to have a cooler afternoon to play in the, today. Yeah, a couple of the previous days have been pretty hot conditions and uh, welcome respite today, you would think, for these players. It's time for Canada to turn on the Jets and see if they can get another upwind point. Eric Taylor is going to send this pull down and the wind's really picked up, which you wouldn't have been asking for if you were going for Canada. So Taylor with a big OI backhand. It's looking good. We've got Hugh Knapp here behind the disc. A lot of fans, a lot of love for Hugh Knapp on the live stream chat. And remember, please send us some questions and comments on the live stream chat and we'll do our best to uh, to chat about them, answer your questions and uh, any shout outs, send them through. So we've got Cole Keffer and he's just given a little one behind to reset back to Hugh Knapp again. Nathan Hurst has the disc, looking very calm. Going to give a backhand here. And it's up in the air. It's a bit of a sitter because of the wind there. And Stifled in the end, right? Yeah, that wind did not do him any favours. You've got to keep upwind hucks low and hard here. So Cody Wood picks up. And the Americans looking to take back that break. And lovely D. Morgan's, Morgan's turn, quick to congratulate his opponent there. That was Hugh Knapp again. What a superstar of this game. We're only 20 minutes in and Hugh Knapp has made some big plays. Battle of the number 13 jerseys here and Morgan Stern knows when he's beat. He was... handled that very well. Right, so we've got Hugh Knapp back with the disc. Captain Knapp does a nice little back backhand here and he's found Cole Keffer. Up the line again. Ooh, oh, Morgan few, Stern. A few players in it. Morgan Stern, that was a risky bit. He managed to just get through before contact. And that is a really good throw. And a simple drop, unfortunately. Sawyer Thompson. Won't be happy with that. Cody Wood put up a very nice catchable flick huck. That's a shame, you know, he can't let it get him down. He's still got the rest of the point to play on defense though. Oh, that one almost hit the ground pretty low. We've got Cole Keffer with the disc again. Flicks it over to the far sideline and it's actually gone out. Bit of a miscommunication there, I think. Further than the far sideline, Steph. <laughs> out into the crowd. There's a good few uh, people watching this game. We've got, um, it's on the showcase field, of course, so a bit of a, bit of a uh, crowd watching these two giants take on each other. And that is a nice, simple move. And just a single cut to the break side. We've got a score. Let's head down to Max Stenstrom, who's got some info for us from ground level. Max. Thanks, Cole. Just wanted to take this opportunity to give you a quick update on some of the games happening around the grounds. This is, of course, the quarterfinal slot in this men's division. In the Australia Great Britain matchup in the men's division, the score is currently 4 all. Both teams locked in a tight one there. Been plenty of athletic plays and plenty of turns, so it seems like that'll be tight all the way through. Likewise, in Switzerland, Germany, they're locked at 3-3. I'll keep you updated on those games as they progress. Thanks a lot, Max, as we see Morgan Stern making up for his earlier loss of the disc with a wonderful D, and the Americans now have broken back and leveled up this game. Uh, beg your pardon, it's now Canada 3, America 2. Right, so we're getting the Canada O-line coming out. They're looking pretty confident. They had a little chat just in that, uh, on the walk back to the front of the end zone. 
Sorry, quick correction, Steph. It's 3 all. Score 3 all. We've got Armstrong with the disc. Ooh, nice fake there. He's found Bryson on the far sideline over there to Tan. So, as we often see when North Americans play World Championships, they do a lot of disc tapping on the ground. Under Woofdorf rules, that's almost never necessary. Establish a legal pivot and you are underway. Oh, great team! Nice one. Fantastic bid there. Was that, I think that was Jake Feller. It was looking good. That was a real nice bid. Foul call. Looks like it might just be an equipment stoppage. Foul call. Oh, Made his shoe come off. <laughs> He's happy for play to continue after that. Okay. Thank you, Ruben Berg, our chief game advisor. As we see a replay of that wonderful D from Jake Feller. He's got high and horizontal and then worn a player as a backpack as a reward. And his team, of course, now in control of the disc. The Americans looking to break Canada again. Chartok with a big flick look. He's got Fella oh. rising high. What a grab, Fella with the bookends. He's going to love that. Put that in your highlight reel, son. What a point. Absolutely stoked with that goal. Upwind again. Seems like we've seen a lot of goals up this end. Yeah, Even though the, it's the uh, upwind point. Absolutely. It's after the first few points where it seemed like nobody could do anything but move downwind. They have turned the tables and now everything's going upwind instead. Timeout called. Wow, that was a super put from Elliot Chartok. Very difficult throw in these windy conditions. A flick huck of that distance to sit it up nicely for his receiver. I'm impressed. It really shows the depth of these players' skills and knowledge about the game, that they can play well under such tough conditions and play well on the world stage. A lot of these players have uh, represented uh, at college, uh, college ultimate levels and also on the world stage before many playing in uh, 2015 London on Canada and USA as well. Yeah, I had a chat with uh, the captain of the USA team, Tim McAllister, on the bus the other day, actually. And uh, last time around for this event, he was originally listed as an alternate. And then uh, due to an unfortunate injury to a teammate, he was called up to the team. So his, this is his second rodeo at World Under 24's level. And this time around, he's been entrusted with the captaincy of this team. We'd just like to stay to thank Star Travel for fulfilling all of our travel uh, needs. And if anyone would like to do any travelling around Australia or uh, a little bit further, please contact Star Travel, one of our major sponsors. Yeah, absolutely. There's been a whole tribe of volunteers and crew to get to this event. And the team at STA have done a wonderful job, so we thank them very much. Both of these teams have come very far. Overnight flights. 20, 20 hours flying to get to Perth. Yep, it's a fair hike. Perth is not next door to anywhere, really. No, because of the geographical location, many teams actually opted not to attend the tournament because of the uh, cost and how far away it was and the timing, you know. So it's one of the smaller, uh, smaller number of uh, teams in the competition that we've seen. But... The level has been just as high as we would expect. Absolutely. The USA pulled to Canada. That is a monster pull. It's staying in though. We've got superstar Nap again. Back to Armstrong. Wow. Morgan Stern got horizontal there. Didn't quite pay off though. Canada's really moving it to all parts of the field, over to the close sideline, far sideline, just looking for the perfect shot. We've got Connor Armstrong again, he's done a nice little flick over to the sideline, found Ben Burrell. The Americans just playing 
A pretty standard match D. I think that's all we've seen this game, the match defense. That throw was a real misfire. I don't know what happened there. I couldn't even see a valid receiver, really. And Burrell, perhaps it slipped out of his hand, perhaps. But could prove costly. The Americans in control and they're moving downwind. And just as they say that, they've coughed up the disc. And Canada with a chance to punch it upwind into the end zone. An untimely drop from USA. That is unfortunate. We've got Knapp, who's just given a little one over to Armstrong and didn't quite work out. USA back with possession. Oh, well, it was swirling around in the breeze there. Fairfax actually did a pretty good job to even be underneath that disc when it came into a catchable height. But it was flapping like a flag by the time it got to him. And the, he wasn't able to catch it. The wind is absolutely the ninth defender in this game. Really, really coming up strong, so it's stifling a lot of those throws. Got Cole Keffer with the disc. Looking around, calling one player under. Didn't quite do it. A little spin to win movement there from Nathan Hurst. Ah, oh, and a call made. It's a nice little spin. Spin to win. I'll yeah. keep that one. That's good. Armstrong back with the disc. He's put it up on the backhand throw. There's four players in the end zone. USA got in there with the D. Great D. Sam Van Dusen timed his jump beautifully. He's a tall man to start with and taller again. That's a big launch and a well executed D. Careful not to impact any of the Canadian players. And the Americans moving it through Van Dusen again now. He's a lefty, he's launched it. But McAllister's not gonna run that down. Those downwind hucks really, they need a lot of touch if they're gonna remain catchable because otherwise the wind is just pushing them away. I think it's picked up a bit since the start of the game. We've got Captain Knapp picking it up here from the front of the end zone. Found Hurst in the middle of the field, he's launched it. He's got Ladyman in sights. Oh. No, that disc had hit the ground. I hit thought ground. perhaps someone had managed to catch the scraps there, but... So the American D-line offense through Cody Wood and then Van Dusen, he's sat it up. That's more catchable and it has been caught. They've done it again, USA, 5-3 to USA. They're on a real run now. That is three, maybe four, point, four points in a row now for the USA. So the Canadians are gonna have to start trying something different. They absolutely made the adjustments where they needed to because Canada got two in, the two in a row towards the start of the game and then tightened up, worked on a few things here and there and uh, looking a lot stronger, right? They've adjusted. That is a good throw and a great catch under pressure. Nice little celebration there. One thing you'll always see on windy days is a lot of pack grabs as the disc sits up. And uh, this game proving no exception. We've seen a lot of high floaty discs coming down slowly with a number of people competing to take the grab. And at the moment, the Americans seeming to come out on top the majority of the time. We've got a little uh, score update from Australia men's playing Great Britain men's. It's eight to Australia, four to Great Britain. Up on uh, field three, uh, just, just behind this field. So a little bit of hometown bias for us. We're happy to see the Aussies going well. And Absolutely. We hope, the, hope GB can put in a strong second half and give themselves a chance. We've got Vu 
with the disc. He's just put it there to Michael McKenzie. Up in the air, being really floated by the wind. Oh! Brought down in the back of the end zone by Breton Tan. That was a mega grab. That was such a quick play. They just, they just boop, 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 straight in there, straight to get a goal. I was pretty impressed by Olivia St. Denis tumbling backflip to celebrate on the way down there too. <laughs> that was an epic catch. Love it. Canada is just absolutely stoked to get this that next goal. It's brought the score a little bit closer. Four to Canada, five to USA. Looked like the disc was gone for all money there, and yet Breton Tan. Pumping those getaway sticks, and he brought it down. <laughs> that is a mega grab. The crowd loved it, and why not? That was awesome. That's, that's what rotation on the disc will give you. If that disc wasn't spinning as much, it would have dropped quicker in this wind. And the fact that it was such a good throw is what let it hang in the air there and gave Tan the time he needed to catch up and make a spectacular diving grab. So Ben Sadok. And I think we've got a call of some description. Not a lot of hand signals from our players. Remember when you're playing at home, it's a self-officiated sport and hand signals help everybody understand what's going on. What's it called? Pick. Pick? And what are you saying? But, but it's where it was called. It's where it was called. So I, I don't catch up, but you're back like... What? Australian women! He's contesting that it was a pick. Oh, it doesn't matter if you're to catch up. It's where it's called. Okay. 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 We all good here? Still count? So, disc is back in. We'd like to thank all our game advisors that have put in their time to come and uh, advise some of the games here. Absolutely, they've done a wonderful job. And, and remember, see Jack Williams with the disc here. Remember, for our uh, game advisors, they can only be—they're not umpires in the according to the Wolf Doof rules. They can only be asked their opinion when the players may not have seen it, and they can ask for the game advisor's perspective. Also, great for clarifying the rules. The game advisors are an encyclopedia with legs when it comes to the rules of Ultimate. Ruben Berg, game advisor, absolutely is. Some say he wrote the book on Ultimate rules. Let's cross down to Max, who's got a bit of info. Thanks, Cole. I do indeed. As you mentioned, Australia taking half 8 4 in their match in the other quarter final. The winner of that match between Australia and Great Britain will play the winner of this one between the US and Canada. On the other side of the draw, we've got a matchup between Italy and Japan. It looks like it's going to be a spicy one. Japan currently leading 7-6. When I was over there, I saw bodies flying left, right and centre, so it should be close. Whereas in the Swiss and Germany game, Germans have jumped out to a lead, they're now 7-4 out, and they're looking in a commanding position. Back to you, Cole. Thanks, Max. You talk about bodies flying left, right and centre. We're seeing that here too, as the US played a little bit of small ball there, lots of short, sharp passes. And the score, just a rapid little backhand rip into the end zone. They're inching their way forward, USA. They're doing really, really well, looking strong. Canada's also looking strong. Let's see another look at that score. Nice grab. And just put out in front of him, but he was able to dive and score. I think that was Sedok with the score. That's their main central handler, and he's struck forward to score himself a goal where he'd usually be throwing assists. A lot of love on the live stream chat for uh, both teams. It's very early in the morning in uh, USA and Canada both, uh, but some, like the real diehard fans, have uh, stayed up or maybe gotten up really early just to catch this game on YouTube. And 
and we welcome all our North American friends. Glad to have you with us, and we are honoured here at Aussie TV to be bringing you this coverage of Canada and the USA as a massive upwind pull goes up. Sitting, sitting, sitting. Down on the ground. Uh, Hugh Knapp, again, behind the disc. Flicks it out, he's found uh, Cole Keffer again. Big throw. Let's see if it can play up, pay off. Nice one, Ty Barberi. Little fake here, little fake there, looking behind to give it back to Hugh Knapp again. And it's a score. Yeah, Nathan Hurst in the end zone. He was open for about a week there, and <laughs> just waiting for his handlers to find a way to get an open look past their mark. And a uh, quick little dump swing. They saw him open in the end zone. And that's a nice, easy score for Canada. Back in at four. Oh, I think the score now is 5-6 to the USA. It's pretty close, pretty close anyone's game. So Canada started on O, so they're going to need to find a way to break the American offense pretty soon if they're to prevent the Americans from taking half. The win, just for the moment, pretty mild. That, anything can change in a couple of minutes, though. Just as you said that, Cole, the wind has really picked up. Yeah, if there's one thing we've learned about it, it's anything but consistent. <laughs> <laughs> so the Americans now offense heading downwind again. That was Felix Marceau with the big pull upwind. It's a tricky one to do, but he's done well. Got it right in the middle of the American end zone. Sadok, across to Chartok, those two together. You would think having the most touches on this American team. And Chartok with a bit of an error. That was nowhere near Sadok, his intended receiver. So Bryson with an opportunity to send the Canadians the other way. He's found Francis Valley. Reset it onto the far sideline, back to Bryson. Put it up in the end zone. Oh, almost found Valley. But couldn't quite get there. Great play, though. Yeah, just tipped off the hands. The wind was picking that up and up and up. We've got to remember to have plenty of spin in the wind. That is a huge pass. And successfully brought down by the Canadians. That was an impressive pack grab. Looking to reset there. Nice little flick over to the far sideline. Ooh, almost got there. Looks like the Canadian player seems to have, might have landed on his neck a little bit. I hope not. Yeah, he looks a bit sore. That's Mike McKenzie there. There's been no injury call. Oh, I think there has been an injury call made actually. So he's waved off a foul. He's staying on. No, staying on. no one's that injured. Another long strike. Sadok on the end of this again. That's a lovely timed cut. And a beautiful throw from, was it Keegan North, I think, that launched that flick huck. And that's a nice connection, Sadok scoring two goals for the USA in a row. Really paid off. It seems like they've uh, tightened up some of those huck throws and they're really coming off a lot better now. Before, in the first couple of points in the game, especially before the first point of the game was scored, we saw lots of flick options, lots of huck options, but they just didn't have the connections. And it seems like they made the adjustments and uh, have found the player. Let's see that replay there. Yeah, that is a very well-measured throw. Hits Sadok in stride. He did not have to work hard to secure that disc at all because the throw was centimeter perfect. And that puts the Americans in a strong position. They're up 
seven to five. And they'll be looking to take half potentially with this point if they can affect a D. We got Nap with the disc again. Plenty of disc time already this game in the first half. Back to Connor Armstrong, number 12. Up in the air. Coming around a little bit. Oh, big T. That is Carl Morgan's turn. He has proved himself to be a phenomenal defender in this game. Can the USA work it all the way up? This pick called on the field. Yeah, the stack downfield was pretty tight and uh, Sawyer Thompson went for a jog straight through it. His defender wasn't able to get through the same gap. Oh, <laughs> that was an amazing block there. That was Cole Keffer. What a superstar. His Nailed acceleration, it. his closing speed, absolutely phenomenal. His opponent, six or seven inches taller than him, and yet he has just burnt him to that disc. That's what we love to see here on the world stage. Hugh Knapp with the disc, and he's gone back to Armstrong. Armstrong's looking for the, a round throw. And he's put a little flick in there. Oh. Found Hugh Knapp again. This is his game. He's killing it. Wow. Armstrong's ability to quickly adjust his grip and fire that flick off. That was seriously impressive. The Canadians doing a little wave to celebrate. I've seen a lot of that uh, in this game and this week. So as we see that deep strike Time out. with Morgan Stern rising up high to get the block. Whoa. And here we see Keffer. That was a seriously impressive block. His opponent Amazing. is a much bigger player mm -hmm. and he's just come flying through. But he got in it. He got in it. He got down dirty on the grass. And we've got a timeout called, I think, by Team Canada. So let's have a look at this quick flick release from Armstrong when he sees an inside look that he likes. Yeah, nice one. Oh. Over to Nap. I'd like to be able to do that. So, Canada make their way to six goals. The USA currently on seven. They'll be starting this next point on offense from the upwind end. And if they're able to move it downfield, and score successfully, they'll take us to half time. It's a ripper of a game, very close. It seems like uh, USA got it like a couple in a row, but then Canada came right back, and then it seems like we've been trading for the last couple of points. Yeah, the Canadians look like they might be losing control of the game for a second there, Steph, but they were able to adjust, and as you said, they needed to try a few new things. Seems they've managed to do that, and. They're absolutely back in it. It's anyone's game. It's a nail biter here in Perth, Western Australia. Right, so the Canadian coach just walking off the field after instructing his players on the next play, how to get in there and rock some defense. We've got uh, William Vu with the disc. With that pull. See the wind's picked up. That pull didn't travel anywhere near as far as the last few have. Alex Olsen. Working with Bray in the backfield. Sadoff gets up high. That was a good catch. And he slung it to the end zone line. That's the front of the end zone. Not quite in yet. Gone back to number 17. North has a look. All the way over the fat side. That's a great throw by Keegan North. He's hit Jack Williams in the end zone. That brings America to eight. They're up eight six and they take half. 
They'll come out in the second half on offense and an opportunity to take a three-point lead over Canada. Mm, so the score stands as Canada 6, USA 8. USA just got that last goal in the end. They're looking pretty st stoked with it. They're looking very happy about that, about taking half. So we're going to have a little seven-minute break uh, for halftime. Let's ha see some of these replays. Let's have a look at this cross-field shot from North. That is a ripper. He had a real good look there. And two USA players right there, open, killing it. So it's halftime here. And with thanks to Emma and Toms, who have been supplying us with delicious health bars and smoothies all week, we are going to cut to a highlight reel of the first half. And we'll be back with you very soon. And welcome back. I'm here with the coach of the Canadian team, Sachin Rayner. Thanks for joining me. I just wanted to ask you about what it means to play this North American rivalry against the US. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, the reality is when you look at the, uh, the seedings and you see USA 1, Canada 2, uh, you kind of assume at some point uh, we're going to meet up in this tournament. The guys have kind of expected at some point we were going to play, and this was a game that we know to get to the gold medal, you got to beat the defending champions. And so perhaps some people are thinking this game's going to be in the final or a semi or somewhere else. It's in a quarter. It, to us, it doesn't really matter when it is. Uh, we just want to win it. So we're pretty excited to be playing in it. Absolutely. Now, obviously, the US jumped out to a couple of point lead there. You were able to pull it back a touch. What did you adjust, and what will you adjust for the second half? Yeah, we got the first break, which was nice, although our first O point took about seven and a half minutes or so. Um, there's not a whole lot of adjusting to do um, because, frankly, with, with this win, there's not a whole... I mean, maybe we can throw some junk at them or we can throw a bit different lineup, but at the end of the day, what we're going to try to do is beat them with our legs, and I think they're showing that they're doing the same. I don't really expect them to make a huge amount of changes because their strength is their athleticism. They might come out junky. Our boys are ready for it. So really, I think we're just going to keep fighting and punching, and whoever punches more is probably going to win this. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Sona. Back to you guys. Thanks, Max. Vibing on myself, I can't trust fake energy Yeah, I'm hella ill, I swear that it's my destiny Kamikaze catching bodies, Kaze Kage, what you mean? Right, yeah, right, yeah, okay Vibing on myself, I can't trust fake energy yeah, I'm hella ill, I swear that it's my destiny Kamikaze, catching bodies, cause kage, what you mean? Right, yeah, right, yeah Hey, young dude with the nice page uh, On the poor field, that's the iPhone yep. Got things to do, that's real brain food That dude send nudes over my space Face food, clean on some water, hey So the pump spread, that's your daughter, hey So I'm in the mood like skirt, but she wanna flirt After she heard, now I'm the dude that she's after I cannot blame her, I'm dapper How come no one was feeling me Back when I was a rapper Back when Roshi was master Carver heart on the nickel Please don't mess with my fingers I'm counting wins with my fingers Now nah, I'm a sight, but don't kill her Koski clan chillin' Villas, parking juice like I'm Chancellor. My flow like honey, go figure. Junkie tripping of life, like mix it up with the dirty. Popping skittles with Sprite, and attitude like don't touch me. Oh, happy thoughts and pinky rings, only brighter things 
money talks when you're feeling greed Satisfy their needs, pull up skirt and hop on the beat Pull up on your turf, energy, got me feeling clean Holy water scene, vibes Bump and grind it, yeah, just don't you stop it, yeah I'm seeing changes, but I haven't even started, yeah Get low and pop it, yeah, and don't you stop it, yeah I'm feeling different, but because I'm low-key popping, yeah Vibing on myself, I can't trust fake energy Yeah, I'm hella ill, I swear that is my destiny Kamikaze, catching bodies, Kaze, Kage, what you mean? So here we are for the second half of this USA Canada matchup. And we thank Sachin Rayner, coach of the Canadian team, for having a chat to us at half time. As he said, not too much they can do strategically here. Perhaps throw a bit of junk D at the Americans, see if they can upset them that way. I had the opportunity to talk with Tim McAllister, captain of the American team, earlier this week. And he was saying that with, for them, with four training camps to get prepared, there's not really that much time to introduce a lot of technical input into the team. And essentially what they're trying to do is just work on composing a good team culture and build relationships among a group of guys that have come from right across the country. And the Canadians, I imagine, in a pretty similar situation. So they don't have a huge toolbox of strategies to draw on that the other team won't already know pretty intimately as well. And uh, at the moment, they're talking about effort being the number one thing. They want to win with their legs, the Canadians. So let's see if they can turn it up here in this second half. The Americans are coming out on O. And they are presently up 8-6. We just had a big pull there by Andre Arsenault. That pull that landed out of bounds. It was a big one, but didn't quite get to the right place. So the US in a side stack here. They're trying to make a lot of space for their cutters to move into. Let's see how the Canadians react to that. They've got a number of players bracketing the isolated cutter, and they've done it really well. And they're forced to turn. Fantastic team really, from the Canadians. Really happy to be in possession of the disc now. We've got... Bryson has picked up the disc there. He's just given it to Tan. Tan's got it. Back to Bryson. Bryson, number 45, even though he's got number 14 shorts. A little bit confusing there. Perhaps he... Uh left his shorts in the wash. There's been a few players that have left them at home by accident uh, this week, but it's all right. Back to Bryson, he's got it over. Ooh, oh, recovery. nice one. Well done. Nicholas da Dacisto to hang on to that one. What a cracker. Over to McKenzie, looking for the score. Oh, floated it out. Bryson. Floated it out, and Bryson's got it there. He Loving has it. milked that in. <laughs> he could have caught that disc outside the end zone, and he took a little bit of a risk, you'd have to say, by letting it soar in. That does give the defensive team an opportunity to get a hand on it, but it's worked out in this case, and the Canadians have broken the Americans on this opening point of the second half, and that's making it interesting, Steph. Absolutely. It's... Eight to USA, seven to Canada, and Canada just got that last goal. They just punched it in there. Look at that. Oh, easy as pie, right? No defender right near him. And Bryson, he Beautiful. loves it. 
So you can hear the call, I think, in the background. Sideline. Let's get loud here. The Canadians know it. This is their moment. They've broken the US. There's a strong breeze behind them now. They've got an opportunity to punch in two in a row to start this second half and level the scores. It's got to be now, Canada saying. It's got to be now. We've got Felix Marceau behind the disc. He's going to put up a big, a big pull. Being carried by the wind there, nice high one. Giving the Canadian boys a chance to run down and get in there. So, the Americans doing a bit of a handler weave here. Leaving their cutters downfield out of the way to start with. Parker Bray now getting involved. That's a nice look downfield to Adam Rees. Rees up line to Jack Williams who's uncorked it. Wow, smooth wow. moving. Alex Olsen with the goal and that could not have been smoother. That was a real quick one, a real quick goal. Uh, they just, they knew where to do it. They knew where all the players were. There was really good communication. It really shows these guys have been playing for a long time together and they've got really good connections. They know where, know where the cut is going to be. Put it out into space, right? Absolutely. So they started that point with a bit of a handler weave. So that's where the cutters keep themselves downfield and out of the way a bit. Let the handlers move the disc laterally and try to gain some yards just with those three. And then when the opportunity strikes, the cutters start to make their moves. And that was decisive. The Americans looking seriously impressive with that upwind shot and now the canadians if their opening point break is going to count for anything they have to hold here it'll be great to see if canada can get this one up and come into the lead potentially they'll need to score two because we've got usa on nine canada seven That's the double whistle, or oh, triple whistle, indicating you got to pull, you got to get it done. So Eric Taylor launches it. Right, so Canada's got possession. They are in the end zone. Put it over here to Darren Wu. Nice little reset there. Looking to just cycle through the handlers in the back there. That's Keffa. Puts it up high and he's found Darren Wu again over on the far sideline, the hillside. This Canadian's looking pretty level headed, pretty, pretty uh, calm, looking for the perfect shot. That was a close one, he got a sniff at it, but uh, seems like Canada was able to hang on to it. We've got Darren Wu again with the disc. Ooh. Thank goodness we had Hugh Knapp there reading it like a book. He's got in it and he's caught it. He's hucked it. It looks like Canada is closest to the disc. See if they can keep it. Nice. Fantastic that was shot. A score by Ty Barbieri. They've done it. Canada's got up there. Nice tight scoreboard. Nice close one. Absolutely, they're now on eight, USA's on nine, and they really needed that score to consolidate the break that they put on the board. We're going to cross down to Ruben Berg with some information from the field. Ruben? Yeah, just something I'm noticing here from the sideline from a Wolves perspective is both teams seems to be allowing lots of travels on the catch. So there's a catch and then the player will be rounding the corner. The players seem to be happy with that, but I think it's important to note from a Wolves perspective that you shouldn't be rounding the corner when you are catching the disc. Thanks, Ruben. So what he's describing there is when you catch the disc, you're supposed to slow down as quickly as you can and in a straight line. And sometimes what will happen is when a player is cutting back towards the disc, when they catch it, of course, what's on their mind is throwing it further downfield. And as soon as their head starts to turn, their body goes with it and they'll make a bit of a J shape. And that is a travel. So if their opponent was unhappy with that, they can call a travel and ask them to redress that infringement. Hasn't been too many calls made in this game though. It seems like the players want to just play. Yeah, they're out there getting it done. 
USA and Canada both renowned for playing a really intense physical brand of ultimate. And they're up against each other here. We've, so abso we've absolutely happy. seen the physical ultimate uh, in this match already. And I think we'll have a little bit more in store. Jack Williams with the disc. And there's a call with no hand signals. Looks like a foul uncontested. Ooh. Crossfield look, Canada with the opportunity they wanted. We've got William Vu picking it up. He's called a timeout. Give him a little chance to reset, set up the offense that they want to have. We've got our sideline commentator, Max Stenstrom, ready to have a little chat. He've, he's got some updates for us. I do indeed. Just providing some updates from the games happening around the grounds and the rest of the quarterfinals in this men's division. In the Switzerland Germany game, the Germans have jumped out to a significant lead now. They're at 12-5, looking very commanding and look like they'll put that one away with ease. On the other side of the pitch, we've got Italy and Japan in a tight one. Italy going up 10-9, both teams calling a timeout at different points in that point when they were sitting at nines, clearly working hard there. And then Australia GB, Australia still with a three-point lead at 11-8. Anything goes in that one, I'll keep you updated. Thanks, Max. I think it might be 12-8 now. I just saw the, the Australians catch one in the end zone and celebrate. So they've added one to their ledger. And they're looking good. Interesting to hear about the Italy-Japan matchup. Italy really rising in the ultimate ranks these days. Uh, I understand they've got a phenomenal junior development program centered around Bologna. And they are producing some bona fide Frisbee superstars these days. That's so, it. Sorry, Cole. That's absolutely right. To get the deep, the deep uh, skills, deep veins in ultimate, you've got to start young. Start spreading, uh, start spreading your, the skills and your own towns with the junior, with the junior groups. We're going to come back into this game. We've got William Vu with the disc over the top. Nice one there to Brett and Tan. Looks like they were just cycling through some handlers at the back. Waiting for the perfect opportunity, trying to get that, trying to get that goal. Vu, back towards the middle, over to Bryson. He's going open. Oh, he's going. I think there was another call made there. I think that might be a stall-out call made by Wyatt Meckler on Bryson. Bryson seemingly claiming he released the disc before ten. Let's see if Ruben's mic can pick up any info. Retracted. And Meckler has taken Bryson's word for it that the disc was released before the t in 10. That's some real good spirit on the field. We've got Vu with the disc. Oh, looking across the front of the end zone. He's found Bretton Tan for another goal. He's got a couple on the board. And Canada has just leveled USA. It's a couple of nines. Ah, oh, nice cheer there by Canada. That's great. They're oh. stoked to be in this position, right, Cole? I love a team cheer. Those boys <laughs> are getting around each other, and that's what Ultimate's all about. A lot of support and love for the teammates. I can really see that on this uh, on this field. Absolutely. So the Canadians have managed to turn what was a pretty disappointing slump around. They went down four points in a row earlier in this match. Yeah, that's a tough place to be in, but you know what? They didn't let the head drop. The heads dropped. They really like just turned it up and uh, got some good things done and put some scores on the board. Absolutely. They're looking bright eyed and bushy tailed now. They're up and about. And uh, we have a, well, well and truly have a great game in our hands here. It is level pegging and the USA started this game on offense and it's now evens. So we're back on serve. I, I love seeing a nice close game. Makes it really entertaining for everyone at home watching online. Hello to everybody watching online and all the fans that are here watching live as well. Yeah, we've got plenty of people on the hillside surrounding this field. It's a lovely showcase field. Ooh, the pool has come right in front of the commentating box right here. We just when about could have caught that one ourselves. <laughs> 
So Elliot Chartok, the spirit captain of this team, is going to take this disc from the brick mark. So Chartok does have the option to take it from the sideline where it went out. I think it actually went out roughly level with the brick myself and then flew backwards from there. So the Americans running their trusty side stack again. And they punted it long. Oh, oh off the fingers. Couldn't quite get a grasp on it. Cannon is really going to have to capitalise after that bungle. Keegan North was beautifully placed to grab that disc. It was a pretty good throw, and he's just mistimed it, unfortunately. Uh, very untimely drop. USA's got to work really hard to get that one back. We're coming in with Bryson with the disc. Steph, it would be an, an absolutely massive talking point for this tournament if the USA were knocked out in quarters. Oh my gosh, it'd be a huge upset. Everyone's expecting the USA to go straight through to finals. Let's see if Canada can... Uh, cause that upset it'll be it'll make it for some interesting finals absolutely that would leave the door wide open and uh if nothing else the canadians are proving that the usa men's team is well and truly beatable nobody else has taken more than seven points off them so far this tournament and Ca canada currently on nine they're in a really strong position we've got Kel cole keffer nice little flick over there to the far side uh sideline back over back over to vu Looking to reset. Nice little one here to Br Mark and Bryson again. There's a couple of cutters long, but he's looked them off. Looking for a little reset to Vu. Another little reset. Bryson to Vu. Bryson to, Bru Bryson to Vu again. And over the top, over some heads. Brought down by USA. Nice D. Jack Williams read that well and launched himself to get that D. Vu with a slightly impatient throw there. And that is a great D. Yeah, really nice. We've got Canada with uh, match defense. I think that's what we've seen all match. All game, just match defense. Um, haven't seen any zone, right, Cole? No, I don't think so. Just one-on-one -on -one all over the ground. Looking to win it with the legs and positioning rather than a structured a structure around the disc. Beautiful backhand there. I think a pick downfield. Causing a short stoppage. And the Americans advancing the disc now. Rees has moved it forward. Alex Olsen launches it cross field and beautifully measured. Keegan North, no mistake this time. He's timed that catch well and brought it in. USA is out on top again. Canada clawed back and then USA has just reached out in front for a 10-9 lead. So we're 74 minutes into this match and time cap comes at 100 minutes. So still plenty of time for Canada to work their way back in. Someone on the live uh, stream for comments just asking about how why some of the players are wearing hoodies and the long sleeves and the long skins. It has actually gone a little bit co colder. It's about 20 degrees Celsius now, and the wind is the wind is pretty cold over the Indian Ocean. So that's why a couple of players in the long skins. We've had pretty hot times this week already, and then uh, a bit cooler this afternoon. The other reason can be, and I know this is certainly true for the Japanese teams that uh, the sun in Australia is brutal. We kind of copped it when the ozone layer depletion occurred and we're still waiting for it to recover. So you can get sunburn down here pretty quickly if you're not covered up. So we're using lots and lots and lots of sunscreen at this event and plenty of people are using the good sense to wear wide brimmed hats 
skins, that kind of thing, to keep the sun off their skin. Yeah, we don't want any sunburn. That'll really cause an upset in someone's mental game and, you know, with a bit of that pain, can't focus properly on the game. And long term, you know, cancer. Yeah, Good, so. that's, that's pretty bad too. So look after yourselves. We're over here to Connor Armstrong, and he's just put it to G. We haven't seen much of G on the field yet, but he's uh, come out strong. Back to Armstrong, looking to do a nice flick towards the center oh! of the field. Defended though, unfortunately. So Jake Feller there. That's his second huge layout D of this match. And the Americans, unhappy with the Canadian resurgence, they've decided it's time to put the afterburners on. Eric Hoteling, quick little reset, round to Cody Wood. Canada's got to work hard here as they uncork it. That's to Fella. no. Oh, was that in? I think that was in to Carl Morgenstern. They're celebrating like it was certainly and that was a close one on the line. USA is just getting right out in front, hey? Yeah, I think that shot was originally intended for uh, Jake Feller and then Morgan Stern. Close to the end zone, probably only a couple of, like, 10 centimetres in it, but yeah. they've done really well to keep it in. Yep, he's made yeah. the catch, and his foot is definitely inbounds of both lines, just next to the cone. So centimetre perfect O from the Americans there. That's a break. And they push back into the lead, 11-9. Canadians have got to keep their spirits up here. There's not a lot of time left. Well, there's not a lot of scoreboard space left, I should say. Yeah, of course, the winner will be uh, first to 15. Or at 100 minutes, whichever comes first. So. What can the Canadians do now? They've got a... They've really, got to, they've really got to turn it up. They've really got to turn it up and get it done and see if they can get a W on the board here. Yeah, they're going to need to play with full intensity, bring everything that they've got to this because the USA have got a two-point lead. In effect, Canada need two breaks and an offensive hold on every single O point in order to win this game. And against a team as skilled and as drilled as the USA, that is no small task. But they've proven they've got the skills. It's totally doable. They're still in it. McCall's Only two points behind. Cool. They're still in it. Nice little kick up there from uh, from Bryson. And we've got uh, Cole with the disc, and he's put it back to Bryson. I'm starting the Keffer fan club. <laughs> that guy's awesome. I want to be able to run like him. He there he is. There's your boy, Keffa, with <laughs> he the disc look again. Your oh, he's put it up. Athlete, but he is a machine. And oh! Oh! Couldn't quite hang on to it. Ty Barbieri in the end zone, unfortunately. There is no time, there is no space for Butterfingers in this game. Definitely not. I thought he had that, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, so, so did I. Couldn't get a grasp on it, though. USA is looking to move it down the field. Are we going to see another huck? Straight away. This will be a dagger to the heart of the Canadians if USA is able to convert now. Oh, good fake. And a deep a shot. Look. It's up. Oh, oh got in go. there. That was Ty Barbieri. He got was. there for the redemption, right? Absolutely. He's unhappy with his earlier drop. And that is a super effort to get possession back for the Canadians. We've got Hugh Knapp. Oh, he's put it very high. Oh, bit too high for Bryson. Couldn't hang on to it. USA is going to come back on. Oh. Bryson's been doing some really good work. And he'd be a bit bummed with that, I think. It was catchable just. And here you go, the Americans have gifted it back to them, Steph. Oh, they're still in it. Let's see what Hugh Knapp can do. Superstar. Oh, he could sell me a house. <laughs> With that fake. Bryson now. That's fake. lovely touch on the flip. Over here to Tan. Tan on the far sideline. Looking sun smart for some looks. Little, little reset here to Bryson again. Oh, couldn't quite get there. There's been a few turns this point 
Oh. Yeah, it's getting messy. Oh, and, and it's up. And we've got a shot. I don't think that one's coming back. Oh, no. Unfortunately. Huck and hope, as someone on the live stream said before. Huck and hope in Perth. Typically, not a strategy that works at the highest level uh. in all but <laughs> the windiest of conditions. I think at this point, the afternoon wind has died down enough that they're going to need something slightly more strategic than that. Mm. But we'll see. So the Canadians really, with very little margin for error left, they've got a score now if they want to win this game. Absolutely. Let's see if they can get it done. We've got Hugh Knapp with the disc. I'd give him the disc. He's a very strong player in this match. Malcolm Bryson. And put it over there to your boy, Cole Keffer. He is the man. Just keep giving him the disc. That's my advice. Back to Hugh Knapp. Looking for the backhand. Oh, a big backhand. That's the stall nine panic hunt. Oh, and that guess is, who's caught it? Stall called. It was tied by Beery oh, and there's a there's stall, a stall called. called. So the disc is actually going to come back. Canada won't. Oh, dear. Oh, this no. is one of the unfortunate things that happen sometimes if you don't hear a call. The they Canadians didn't hear that are still celebrating, but. They had an amazing play. Let Just let them have it. Just let them have it. <laughs> It was so good, and it's really put it like them nice and close in the game. But it's got to go back. Oh, we've got go back. Back. we've got Ruben over here, our so game professor. Second so in. Contested still. It's a contested stall. Contested. So should we be coming on stalling eight? And all these people should be back where they were when you threw it. I'll leave you guys to tell them that. So that was. The kind of result you want to receive for a stall nine panic hack. And uh, unfortunately, for the Canadians at least, Jonah Wish quite certain that the 10 seconds had elapsed. And he has asked for that disc to come back, as he's well within his rights to do. So the disc is going to come in on stall eight, so he's probably going to throw that. Only, only a second, only a second to throw it. Got to get it away, straight away. Nice little reset to Bryson in the back of the end zone. Back over here to Nap, but he's a little bit further in the Canadian end zone. It's a dangerous place to be. Bryson's got the disc on the sideline again. Looking up line, and he's found... He's found Ty Barberi again. Barberi's done well to get himself back into this after a little bit of a mistake earlier. And that oh. is an unfortunate throwaway. On the ground. It's gone Sp mowing. Absolutely spewing with that one. So, the Canadians are going to have to go all out now. They have to get this disc back. It's got to be now for Canadian defence. And I think we've just heard a victory from the Australians against GB oh. as we see a massive hammer go up. Cameron Warner, cool as you like, bombs a hammer cross field, and that is a goal. Unbelievable shot from the USA. They're up now, 12-9. It's a bitter. It's it's a bitter taste in Canada's mouth. They worked really hard. They got one in the goal, but unfortunately there was a there was a stall out. Uh, there was a stall out, contested stall out over downfield, uh, so they didn't get to hang on to it. And then USA went and capitalised and got it. But we've got a little, uh, we've got a little insight here from Max Stenstrom, our commentator on the sideline. What have you got here for us, Max? I do just want to confirm what happened on the field next door. The Australian Goannas going up 15-11. They have booked their ticket to the semi-finals. Likewise, Germany crushing Switzerland 15-9. They will be in the semi-finals as well. We await results from the Italy-Japan game. Last time I was there, Italy was leading 13-11, but that one will be a close one and will go the full distance, just as it probably will on this field here. Thanks, Max. So, if I remember correctly, Australia now gonna play the winner of the match that we're watching between Canada and the USA. And, uh, Absolutely nail biting. No matter which team goes up against Australia in the next match, it will be it will be a tough one Absolutely. for all teams around. It's a super competitive division. This under twenty four men's 
category at the World Under-24 Ultimate Championships here in Perth. Game advisors have hit the whistle to let us know that the timeout's over. And Canada now, really, it's do or die. They have been working towards this moment for months and years. They absolutely have been training in the gym, on the field. A lot of them watching a lot of uh, videos to get their, uh, get their knowledge about the other opposition, about the other teams. They've got a great coaching staff uh, on hand. Let's see if they can just put all those things together, all that hard work, and uh, really punch it through and make a spot in the semi-finals. So, at this point, I think they need four breaks. No, three breaks, which is a tough ask. It is. So late in the game as well. We're already 85 minutes in. Of course, the end of the game is 100 minutes. Well, time cap's 100 time minutes, caps, so yeah. they would take the score at that time and add one. So you can never win a game of ultimate by waiting at world championship level. You have to score a goal to win. Mm. So Canada with the disc. We've got Armstrong who picked up and he's gone over to uh, Nap again. Oh, no, sorry. That was Keffer. And we're back to Armstrong. A lot of movement there on the fakes. Over here to the sideline, he's found Kinley G. Back to Cole Keffer. On the sideline, he's not looking rattled at all. He's looking ready to go. Launches it. Launches it. It's a big shot. I think it's going to make it all the way to the end zone. Oh, big D. In Huge the front of the D. end zone. And, yep, no arguments. I did get a look at who that was. I think number 15, Eric Taylor, getting big. And now Morgan's turn with the disc. And if the USA put this in, you'd have to say the game is almost out of the Canadians' reach. But the wind picking back up, at least for a moment. So perhaps the weather gods on Canada's side, at least for now. And oh, oh, nice defense. on the mark. That was... I think it might have been Barbieri, wasn't it? Yeah, Barbieri, number 15, did an amazing defense. Stop that disc from going through. Let's have another look. So, the disc coming back to Van Dusen from Morgan Stern, and then a foot block from Barberi. And as we're watching that replay, plays quickly restarted, and the Canadians Canada have put got it a in. goal. That was number 55, Kinley G, with that goal. Stokes to get it. So, the Canadians now up to 10, America on 12. Uh, Doing their little wave, Canada. Still got a pulse. They're still in it, just. Very close game, very close game. It's exciting to be a part of it. So they're going to have to work seriously hard now because the wind is blowing pretty heavily again mm. after taking a little bit of a break for a moment. The weather gods appear to have it's got their energy back in anger. It's a very cold wind. Very cold wind. These guys are ready to go. Canada, we've got uh, William Vu with the disc and he is looking confident. Let's see if he can pull it, keep it in the field. Max, you got some news for us? I do indeed, Cole. Italy have beaten Japan, which means Italy will be meeting Germany in the first semi-final. Ooh, we and saw Australia will be meeting the winner of this game in front of us in the second. We saw a great match up against Italy Germany the other day. It Indeed. was that, that had a 26 minute point right at the end of the game. I was commentating oh. for that match up and it was a battle for the ages so I'm Gripping. really looking forward to the rematch. Yeah. That's awesome news. So the Americans now using the full width of the field. Ross Barker here. Barker with a wide open receiver in Fairley. Fairley off to Joe White. And White with a nice little around reset. The Canadian match deep. Oh, there's a deep shot into double coverage here. They were trusting oh. White. And that goes down. Yeah, that seemed like a relatively ambitious shot from where I'm standing. We've got a uh, got Canadian offense coming out 
coming out ready to go. We've got Connor McFadden. He's just he's on the field. He's not with the disc at the moment, but I think it's the first sign we've seen of McFadden uh, this game. Number two. We've got Malcolm Bryson with the disc walking up to the front of the end zone, looking to do a back uh, flick release. McFadden with the disc, giving it back to Vu. Over the top. Oh, and it's been caught by the wind, unfortunately, and goes out. This is a dangerous, dangerous place to be. Can Canadian defense has got to be top notch to stop this goal from going in. Yeah, that high release backhand flip was a risky one into this kind of a headwind. Mm. You need serious rotation to keep that under control. So White looking at Sadek. Still not in, but very close to the front of the end zone. Little one, and, and he's punched a it in. in Sadek to Jack Williams, and America now 13. Japan mix. I think it's been Jack Williams' game. I've seen a lot of great things from him uh, coming out on the field. Absolutely. He's been good on O. He's been great on D. And uh, look, I'm sticking with my man Keffer yeah. for the fan club. But yeah. Jack Williams, I'll hand it to him. He's playing some great frizz. Cole Keffer fan club, please get in touch with us. <laughs> All right. The Americans with a three-point lead. The Canadians on offense with the wind behind them. And they're going to need to play with some serious intensity to win this one now because they need three breaks to win it. It's doable, but it's a lot to ask. It's Let a lot to ask. Be interesting to see how they go on this offense, see if they can get it done. Just got to put it in the bag. USA is just really looking to hold that lead. In a, in a bit of a comfortable position, but there's no place to be complacent here. No, definitely not. We've seen some amazing comebacks in this tournament. So Big upsets as well. Is this going to be another upset? <laughs> Connor Armstrong's grabbed that pull, and he's given it to Q Nap again. Armstrong's got the disc in the middle of the field. Back to Captain Knapp. Oh, looking for, looking to send it long, but holsters it and just does a little one over there to Connor Armstrong. Here we've got Cole Keffer, and he's launched it. He's got 27. Nathan Hurst oh! in sight, and he's come <laughs> down with it. What an amazing grab by Nathan Hurst. He's one of the captains as well for Canada, and he's just done an absolute cracker of a catch. Canada are so happy with that one. So Here I, I, we've got Cole Keffer having a little water, ready to <laughs> ready to come out again. Got to stay hydrated, boys. So I think that was Cam Warren up with the attempted D, mm. and it looked for all money like he was going to swat that one, and somehow oh. it's managed to sneak past him. What a great throw! Oh, he was very close though, wasn't he, Carl? That was seriously close, and Hurst is oh. loving it. Slams it into the ground, <laughs> runs up the hill. <laughs> so, Canada still hanging on. It's 13-11 in favour of the USA at the moment. And they still have the wind at their backs. Looks like all the other games have uh, finished. They've all gone to... They've all gone to points cap, but we're still here with USA men's versus Canada men's. All the fans are slowly, slowly trickling over to yeah. watch the uh, watch the only match that's being played at the moment. We've got Felix Marceau with the pull. Into a pretty stiff win. It's not even made it to the brick mark. Mm. So Ben Sadek picks up. Sadek across to Olsen. Olsen hits Jack Williams. He's everywhere at the moment. Joe White. Oh! Ah, oh, yeah. wow. That's Michael McKenzie who reckons he grabbed that one. Yeah. But there's been a bit of a discussion on the field. So in this situation, if both players catch the disc at the same time, offense gets preference. 
if the defender's able to convince the offender that he managed to catch it first. I think I caught it. I think I caught it. I, I truly believe I caught it first. I think I stopped rotation. Let's have another look at it. What do the viewers at home think? It's pretty tight. Did Mackenzie get in there? Let's have a look from another angle. A little backhand there. Oh, it's, it is very close. Just simultaneous from here. Whiskers in it. Only whiskers. If my body was in front of you and my hand hit the front edge, I think it's mine. He said I had an edge. It's two whistles there. So, contested situation, and the disc goes back. I think we obviously have the benefit of slow motion replay, and from where we stand, it looked pretty simultaneous, that catch, which means the disc remaining in the hands of the offense is the correct outcome. So, I think contesting that reasonable outcome and we're back in play with Joe White. Quite a few fakes in there. Oh, and we've got a pass that was a bit too spicy for Alex Olsen to pull in and that's creating some excitement in the crowd. Bryson picked that one up. He's got uh, Cole Keffer is under it. Oh, I think it got brought down. Oh, there's a little bit of a discussion. So Keffer obviously not the tallest guy in the contest. And uh, Will Laurie indicating to his teammates to just tone it down a little. Retracted. And that foul call is retracted. He got his feet in the right place, but... He can't get, teach height. No, he can't. Oh! <laughs> that was a great defense, but there has been a call on the field. Yeah, Bryson with a oh. big poach off the front of the stack, and uh, Parker Bray signaling that he had caught that before Bryson stripped it from his hands. Oh. And this game is still alive. It's full of twists and turns, up and down. Uh, Canada's going to come back on O now. We've got your boy Malcolm Bryson, captain of the team, coming. Oh, there's been an injury call, actually. I'm not sure who that was for. Keffer. Keffer. So Keffer taking himself from the field with an injury of some sort. The Canadians can replace him, and the Americans are also allowed to replace a player of their own. Uh, the it's idea being that we want to ensure there are the same number of fresh legs on the field, for fairness. The Americans aren't obliged to replace a player, but they can if they choose to. Looks like we've got Nathan Hurst coming on to replace uh, Keffer. He scored the last goal. Maybe he'll score the next one. I hope so. He's a bit of a superstar. It's been a great match. It's been a great game for Hurst. Bryson with the disc, pretty close to the front of the uh, end zone. He's put it out in front. Nice one found, Brenton Tan. Little one back, little one back, gives it back to Bryson. Is he gonna shoot it? Is he gonna shoot it? Whoa. Oh. Well <laughs> done to Hurst. Hurst, straight on the field, in with a spicy catch, done well. Ooh, up in the air, floating, floating, and it looks like it's coming out. <laughs> Good, uh, nice little use of the header there from Morgan Stern. <laughs> <laughs> so, unfortunately, Hurst's inside flick look didn't have enough rotation. Just got caught by the wind, didn't it? Caught by the wind and flew away, and a timeout call Whoa. by Alex Olsen. <clears throat> So we've got Max Stenstrom down on the ground with a bit of news for us, Max. I do. I've just had a quick chat to Cole Kaffer who came off with a bit of a, a tweaked knee there. 
The story is he sprained his MCL in the first game of this tournament right. and he's been playing with tape on it since. He just gave it another twist and a sprain just then. I've never seen a physio apply so much tape in such a short amount of time to one part of the body. She was wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. A couple of rolls on there at least I'd say by this point, but he's pretty keen to get back out on the field. He's obviously been playing a crucial role for the Canadians this entire game. He made an incredible defensive bid early in the game and he's thrown a couple of absolute dime balls deep in the last few points. So we hope he's back on the field soon. Yeah, thanks, Max. He's an extremely dynamic player. As I've said, I've formed the Cole Keffer fan club, not least because he's got an excellent first name. And, uh, and I'm about as tall as him too, so lots you're to bit, like. You're a bit biased, Cole, <laughs> think, here in the commentator's booth. <laughs> and uh, no, he deserves every minute of praise that we give him because he's an absolutely dynamic player and he's had a huge impact on this game. And hopefully that knee holds out and he can continue to keep playing at the level he has been. So USA have set their offense and Canada is just uh, tightening up, just like figuring out where they're going to put the defense there. John Kay. And we've passed the 100 minutes. Time cap has elapsed. So we will go to the end of this point and then add one to the highest score. The game will end on that score. Parker Bray has unleashed it. Will Content. it fit? It will. Oh. What a throw. That was phenomenal from Parker Bray. That you could put a disc up that high, that far in this wind and give nobody but your intended receiver an opportunity to catch it is something seriously impressive to behold. The scorer was Jack Williams, who has played an absolute ripper today. He definitely has, really showing a lot of depth and skill. So, USA now 14, time caps elapsed, but either way, it's a game to 15. Keffer still not taking the field. Check out that throw. Look at the placement. That is phenomenal. Oh, a little fall at the end. He knew he's got it. Knew he had hands on it. Woo! So Canada now needing four scores in a row to win this game. They need an offensive hold, followed by three breaks. And Pretty rough. Pretty rough. <laughs> I don't want to call it already, though. No. Oh. Fat lady. Something along those lines. Wait till she sings. Yeah. I have no idea where that saying comes from. It makes zero sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if the Canadians, the first thing they've got to do is punch in this O point. I think that's Connor Armstrong catching that one. Tristan van der Mortel is running his legs off on T here. We had a little cut in from Hurst, but he's decided to send it to Nap on the sideline instead. Back to Armstrong. Over the top there, found uh, Matthew Ladyman. Armstrong's got the disc again. Does a nice little backhand. Looks like everybody stops. Pick call, I assume. Pick I've call. got to say, not impressed with the total lack of hand signals these teams are employing. Something I think to work on for later in the tournament, lads. Perhaps they're used to playing with umpires. But they don't need to show the hand signals. Oh, that oh. is a very clumsy bid. Not too keen on that one. Darren Wu hung on to it though. That is definitely a foul and Eric Taylor needs to be careful. Hurst with the disc. He's done a bit of a ground gainer. Oh, wow, big couldn't, double bid. Couldn't find Barbieri, unfortunately. This could be the end of the game with USA on offense. So Cody Wood, I think, holding the disc. And his swing is scooped up by Tristan van der Mortel. <laughs> little stumble there. Yeah, that was a bit clumsy, but no obviously harm, no uncontested. Up he gets. 
think he's looking for the Hark. He's sending his, he's signaling to his teammates to go deep. It's a nice look. Sawyer Thompson. Now Morgan Stern. With the swing to Vander Mortel. America knocking on the door here. Wood with the disc. Is this the ticket to the semi-finals? Canada's got to keep some really strong defense. Can they get in there with a block? Oh, the Canadians poached. The poach was recognized. And Van de Mortel with the final score of the game. The Americans take this one out. US 16 to 11. USA has done it. They've got a ticket to the semi-finals. So they'll be playing Australia tomorrow, I think. So that will be a super exciting matchup. This American team has skills, they have athleticism, they have pace, they have height. And it's got to be said, the Australian winners have the same. The Canadians have fought valiantly today. They have played some super frisbee. There's that bid from Taylor, which didn't end well. It is everybody's yeah. responsibility to look after the players on the field. And this is a non-contact sport. That was a phenomenal double bid from both players. Yeah. <laughs> USA got, it, got there in the end. He just read it a bit better. And there's the final throw of the game. The Canadians had sagged a poach off in order to stop a score. And the poached player, Vander Mortel, was good enough to put himself in a winning position. So that's the game to the USA. They're into the semi-finals tomorrow. Steph Ma, thank you for your commentary and joining me here in the box. You are most welcome, Cole. Thank you for being here as well, Cole Fink. And we've also had Max Stinstrom, our, our roving reporter, giving us lots of updates from all the other games that have been happening at the same time. So thank you to that. And thank you to the crew that's been filming and putting together the sound. Absolutely. Thanks to the LT TV crew. It's been our pleasure. And uh, we look forward to some thrilling semifinals tomorrow. Catch you soon. Bye. Just say